Church. Andy, it's good to see you back, but we, we kind of thought or hoped this story was going to be over. What's going on? Yeah, that's exactly right. And it, it sends a clear message that we're not out of the woods yet in terms of the coronavirus impact on the mortgage and housing market. Again, as you said, after three weeks of continuing improvement uh, in, the, in the forbearance trends in the market, we clearly bucked that trend this week. And this is in a big way. It says here this is erases roughly half of the improvement seen since the peak of May. Um, do you know what has accounted for this? I mean, we can assume that some of the harder hit parts of the country because of coronavirus, is that prompting more layoffs? Is it people who thought they might be back in their jobs in places in the Northeast, but those places aren't reopening the way that, that they had hoped? Can you get any sense of, what, of that? Yeah, and I think there are a number of different drivers behind what we're seeing here this week. One is potentially more benign, and that's that we just passed the 15th of the month. And what we've seen in prior months is when you, when you see those late fees charged on mortgages, it prompts some homeowners to go out there and initiate those forbearance claims. So perhaps a little bit of that. Uh, another thing that we also see this month is that there were a large number of forbearance plans that were set to expire here in the month of June. Perhaps homeowners that had taken those forbearance plans out as an insurance policy starting to see some of those uh, economic numbers, some of those COVID case rate rises, and they're sticking in those plans a little bit longer than they otherwise would have been. Interesting. Where do you think this leaves the mortgage market in terms of, I mean, we just uh, had the mortgage rate briefly dip, I believe, below 3 um, percent. You know, you have new buyers coming in. But overall, does this, you think, negatively impact uh, perhaps the spread uh, on mortgages or does it trickle back through any other number of ways? Yeah, and surprisingly, when you look at originations and when you look at lending spreads, kind of the primary versus secondary spread, you've actually seen that fall a little bit, which has been helping to drive down those mortgage interest rates. It's been helping to to uh, kind of put upward pressure on that that home buying demand and, and refinance incentive in the market. So it'll be interesting to watch that over the next couple of weeks to see if that shifts at all with some of these new numbers uh, coming out. But we have been seeing those spreads improve in recent weeks. And finally, as you said, this also could be a little bit of a monthly effect. You know, we have people who maybe seen those late fees and thought maybe now's the time to enter forbearance. I believe our Diana Olick has reported this program will be around through the end of the year. Um, so we could be facing a number of months in which a trend that we thought was a one-time trend could become somewhat recurring, right? That's right. You have these monthly cyclical trends that, that take place in the market. The other big one is uh, unemployment benefit ex uh, extensions that are that are due uh, to expire at the end of July. So that's a big one that we'll be keeping an eye on to see if and, and what impact that has on mortgage performance and forbearance volumes as well. Yeah, that's a great point. Andy, it's good to see you again, sort of. Uh, you thank well. you.